more good news from Electrify America on the national level and uh, a lot of the good news on the state level is from VW and Dieselgate, which is what we'll get into next. Welcome to a very quiet Burlington Mall here in Massachusetts. Quiet for obvious reasons, but we're focusing on positives today, and many of those comprise the rapid expansion of this charging network. I wanted to take a look at EV charging infrastructure. Let's hop in the car and take a look. Welcome to another Coffee and Kilowatts. That's number two after last week's uh, inaugural edition. Um, this is just a weekly effort on my part to try and take a look at some of the stories that have uh, flown under the radar. So let's dive in today and take a look at uh, EV charging infrastructure, specifically in the USA, which is expanding rapidly and uh, definitely deserves its own episode. So here we go. When we talk about uh, fast charging in the US, or at least non-Tesla fast charging, we are talking about Electrify America, or in this case, Electrify Alabama, who uh, will be getting five, count them, five new uh, sites from Electrify America. Um, they're going in in Athens, uh, Oxford, Auburn, Greenville, and Saraland, which is near Mobile, Alabama. Apologies if I've butchered those pronunciations to any locals. And that's always been a location that people have asked me about, especially when we were heading down to Fully Charged Live and uh, Electrify America were gonna have a large presence there. You know, talk to them about where they are in the South, specifically Alabama. I personally didn't hold out too much hope that we would see much uh, movement on that particular area, mainly because Cycle 2 is focusing on areas they've already established and areas with high EV ownership, which I don't think Alabama qualifies for just yet. A lot of the coming soon sites, the 90 or 98, something like that, are uh, over in California, and then a few dotted around the East Coast and uh, the middle of the country. But specifically, these new ones, that area will get, you know, a nice glut of new chargers that will be as fast as you can get, you know, 350 kilowatts in uh, some cases, and they will serve that state well. And sticking with Electrify America, on the uh, subject of gaps, uh, one of the key ones across Utah now on I-70 is going to be Bridge. You really are out in the, uh, the wilderness there a little bit. But there's a site going in where I believe there's already a supercharger in Green River, Utah, which will bridge that gap nicely from Colorado Grand Junction area where the final um, Electrify America site is at the moment when you head west and then over to Richfield in Utah where it gets a little more populated. The place they've chosen is pretty attractive place for me and uh, relevant for this uh, place called Green River Coffee. So it's an independent coffee shop and I'm sure as EV adoption grows they will be very glad to have that site there. Also a gap uh, over from Texas to New Mexico. Again, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Tucumcari in New Mexico will uh, bridge a little bit of a gap along I-40. Um, and again, you know, these are all sites that are going to be useful. Alabama gets a lot of benefit from the five sites we mentioned, really starts to build out their infrastructure. And the Utah and New Mexico sites bridge one of those, you know, or a couple of those key uh, east to west routes. More good news from Electrify America on the national level. And uh, a lot of the good news on the state level is from not Electrify America, but from VW and Dieselgate, which is what we'll get into next. We also have uh, state level funds from Dieselgate going into, uh, every state gets a chunk of money and uh, they've all decided to spend it in different ways. Some have been a little bit, um, you know, cheeky and maybe started to look at clean fuel, you know, so they're looking at fossil fuels that are uh, supposedly, you know, not as polluting. But so some states are really going ahead with that and some key ones as well. Uh, North Dakota is the most um, prominent one that caught my eye. It didn't really get a whole lot of attention, which I was surprised by because the Dakotas are always pointed out as two of the states that people really you know, even Tesla until recently struggled to have any presence there. It was tough to get across. Um, but they are getting 8.1 million from uh, Dieselgate, of which uh, 1.25 million will be going to DC fast chargers. Um, if you take a look on uh, PlugShare, and I'll overlay it here, that's uh, eight DC FC sites going in across the state, places like Bismarck, Fargo, 
um, and those will be important. Um, more in the future, because from what I was reading, there are only uh, 150 EVs in North Dakota as of the end of last year, so those um, numbers need to come up significantly. So being put in by the De Department of Environmental Quality, and they have summer 2020 as a goal. Whether that happens or not, we will see, but uh, quite often that is a, uh, a big part of it, you know, site identification and uh, agreements being signed up. So it's, uh, some good news for any of you either in those areas around the Dakotas or trying to plan a trip across the country sometime soon when we're allowed to make them again. And a little bit closer to home here in New England, um, same with state level funds. Uh, Maine actually has a good example of uh, already using those funds. Um, they have sites uh, in Kennebunkport, in Gardner, uh, one that is a good uh, site up towards the um, border with Canada. And that's uh, all thanks to Efficiency Maine getting those installed and uh, bridging some gaps there. I know the same is happening in New Hampshire, just uh, their neighbor to the west. Um, the Efficiency New Hampshire uh, organization was at the end of last year in uh, the planning stage. I believe they're now moving on to the RFP stage. Um, those could be in place for summer 2021 travel. So again, more, more good news traveling across New England. New Hampshire really does need some infrastructure additions up to the White Mountains. Um, there's some really big gaps up across to uh, getting to key tourist areas and up into Vermont. So it'll be good to see those going live as well. And then finally, we have uh, one of the key uh, charging initiatives, at least for my own personal uh, travel preferences. It started off having almost nothing. I mean, there was between Albany and Buffalo, 300 miles of not even dealership charging at that point. Lots of level twos, you've got to give New York credit for setting that up well, but uh, Electrify America has bridged it in more recently. You know, you've got chargers in, uh, Herkimer, uh, Waterloo uh, near Rochester, and then over in Buffalo and heading down to Fredonia, Ohio, bunch of different charges across that route. So, but there's no redundancy there. If the, as we saw with the trip down to Austin, if the station craps out on the location is completely, you know, unable to charge, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to charge on level two. So it's Evolve New York. It's a uh, $250 million initiative um, started up by a governor who is uh, very much in the headlines at the moment. It's very aggressive uh, clean energy and uh, carbon reduction um, targets for 2030. And a part of that is the $250 million that is uh, part of Evolve New York, which will uh, supposedly bring 200 DC fast charging stations um, to New York State by 2025. Um, the initial plans were a little confusing. It was supposed to be the end of last year where they were going to have at least 20, something like that, in place. That uh, came and went with no real um, progress. But I uh, started to be a, a part of some conversations that now are looking at specific sites. Uh, those will all be four stations minimum, so very similar to an Electrify America site where they'll, they'll never go below four unless it's a uh, community site that serves a metropolitan area but the highway sites that uh, go in as part of the evolve ny will all have uh, at least 150 kilowatts by the sounds of it so they'll be semi future proof i'm all in favor of that it really you know especially the rest areas really good locations we've seen with the capital region welcome center there's one in western new york near niagara which has been really useful to a lot of people coming down from Canada. Uh, they were actually some of them in place before the Electrify America sites, so they're really useful places and they do help to uh, start to support EV drivers coming in for tourism, to get across the state for business, whatever they do, or lunatics like me driving down to Austin for no particular reason. Um, some of them, by the sounds of it, have been held up by the wider New York Thruway uh, rest area renovations where they have some, you know, a bunch of other different projects underway as well, so they can't prioritize the DC fast chargers, but a program that's going to potentially, you know, if it expands as rapidly as they say, and it does start to make some progress now that they break ground, um, they could really lead the nation in some ways outside of California in showing state level initiatives to expand uh, DC fast charging for electric vehicles. Much as manufacturers need to bring out competitive cars, uh, states need to start making their EV charging competitive as well. We need fast charging, we need um, whatever you need to do there, incentives, you know, state level funding from Dieselgate or wherever else it comes from um, to start building out that infrastructure. 
so there we go. Uh, that's number two of coffee in kilowatts in the bag. Hopefully you're enjoying the series. Um, if you have any kind of ideas and uh, you know feedback for what you'd like to see in this uh, particular segment, I'm trying to keep it weekly. I don't want to make it a you know news digest so much because there are plenty of good places to go for that. You can look at EV News Daily, the podcast, um, EV Lounge Live from the same uh, creator. Transport Evolved is a good one to look at. Fully Charged from the UK obviously has weekly news. So you can you can find all that stuff around the place. But um, I want to try and use this to catch some of the things that happen locally, certainly, but also guests, uh, interviews, um, different kind of perspectives. If there's something you'd like to see that you don't feel is covered in the general wider EV media, I'd be happy to take a look at it. So let's uh, see what we can put together and hopefully I can make this a useful weekly resource for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching and stay safe.